Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna dive into Houdini and I'm gonna show you what I've used to create this trail. Whenever I need a stylable smoke texture or large smoke bloom in the distance, I usually do use this technique to generate um, smoke. So it's just a static texture that we're gonna render out from Houdini. We're probably gonna make this stylable in substance as well. And basically you can take that into game engine and use it as a either overlay on top of the existing texture. So as you can see here, I've got this red uh, laser line. I've got the texture from substance and I'm just overlaying that smoke texture to get an extra noise. Same for the smoke coming from the muzzle here. However, if you've got a um, different weapon like for example a rocket launcher and you need very subtle trail of the smoke you can use that technique or if you just need a large smoke plume that might be played in the distance and you just need a static texture you can use that one as well okay so let's dive into Houdini now Here I just want to quickly show you the breakdown of this uh, plane. So whenever you want to display the smoke texture, you can use that plane. In Unreal Engine, you probably want to use uh, beams to display that. However, in Unity, you either need to code and create the projectile trace on the fly, or you can just use that mesh. So I've got a simple line. It's got one length, four points. I'm using the sweep note as well uh, as a ribbon I've got two columns and then I go straight to UV and attribute in here I just normalize it as well in UV transform I just rotate it 90 degree and offset it by one in translate and then I'm just multiplying its scale by 50 in order to get the game engine scale okay so now let's try to recreate that smoke uh, trail. I'm gonna create a geometry node, dive inside and I'm gonna start with a line. And here I'm just gonna change its direction to point at the x-axis and maybe let's increase its length to, uh, let's maybe go with five. I'm going to check the points and I've only got two at the both ends. So I'm going to use a resample node. And in here I can actually decide how many points do I want. So I'm going to go with 10. I'm going to use a point jitter as well. But I'm going to zero the Z axis. So it's only offset on other axis, but not this one. Next, I'm going to try to get another resample and see if I can smooth this out a bit using the subdivision curves. And here I control how many points do I want. I'm going to try to use smooth as well just to add a bit more smoothness to it. Okay. And I'm going to use copy to points node. I want to control the random scale of those points so I can uh, get the random sphere on those points. So I need attribute random. I'm going to plug this in here. For now, let's keep it as a CD, which is color, so we can actually see that it's doing something. Next, I'm going to grab Sphere, which I'm going to turn into a polygon, increase the frequency and plug it in. So as you can see, we're getting a different colors, which is exactly what we wanted. I'm going to disable the points. And here I'm just going to change this to P scale. And I want to randomize it between 0.5 and 1. And we're getting uh, this. 
So what we could do, we could go to our point jitter and increase and this if we wanted to. I'm actually gonna zero the height axis or maybe lower it to something like 0.5 so we're getting like this trail uh, looking. Maybe let's zero that axis so we can only offset it that way and also we can go to our point jitter here where the seed is and change the seed so we can create slightly better looking trail maybe something like that next I'm gonna use cloud node I'm gonna turn it on I'm gonna increase its subdivisions I'm gonna start with maybe 500 I'm gonna fill the source everything with default values for now and next let's maybe get cloud noise it's gonna take some time because it seems like Houdini is calculating everything I'm gonna enable it and we're getting that kind of look uh, let me get like a very basic lighting because I've got the distance, uh, distant light here. So I'm just gonna click on it. So you can see all the settings I've got here. That's the rotation and for the light. And those are the settings if you wanna copy it. Okay. So let's head back to our setup. And I think now is a good time to actually create that distance light. So you can press and hold control on your keyboard and just press distance light. I'm going to disable the lock and I'm going to change these settings uh, manually. So I'm going to change its color to red just so we can see uh, what's happening. I'm going to enable the high quality light and go to transform. You can zero the translate values if you want. And I like to zero all of the values here so I can manually tweak what sort of rotation I want. I think this light is still on, so I'm going to disable it. I'm gonna get the white color now, or maybe a bit orange. You can tweak the intensity. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try to rotate it a little bit that way, so we're getting those nice shadows coming from the bottom, and also rotate it that way. So we're just getting a little bit better look. Uh, let me check my settings here, if I'm missing something. Nope, I think the rest is the default. So I think that's it. I'm gonna get rid of that light because I just wanna show you how to create one. And I'm gonna use uh, the one I've got. So you can see mine is uh, just white, but you can add colors if you want it. Okay, so let's dive back into this, uh, those nodes. Right, so cloud noise, let's try to tweak some settings. So, in here you've got roughness, I'm gonna zero it because I don't want too much noise. And whenever you're changing the settings, it's gonna take a couple seconds to calculate. I'm going to increase the element size, maybe back to four or even higher number. And for the noise, I'm just going to add a bit more octaves. Okay, so now we're getting some nice random shapes. And in here, I'm going to go to scatter shapes and get the secondary shapes as well okay so I think those nodes are mainly being used for clouds obviously but I find that I can use them if I want to some very thick smoke as well so obviously that looks very dense what you could do you can go to density here and just lower that number maybe to three and you can get something that looks a bit closer to the smoke. 
as you can see here, or like a soft cloud if you need one. Okay, now you can just play with the jitter that you've got here if you want a different shape. However, if you just go in for the static texture, I think that will work. Now let's go back a bit. And if you want to create your own camera, I'm just going to do this, disable the lock. And here I'm going to select, I want a second camera now. I'm going to zero its translate values like this. I think I'm going to go with maybe eight. I'm going to zero their rotation as well. And here I'm just going to middle click and try to get that in in the view. You can change the camera settings for your resolution here if you wanted to. But now I'm just going to go to render view, press render. And that's the result I've got. It took 33 seconds on my PC. And let me just navigate to the render settings as well so you can uh, see what I've changed here on the rendering. If, in case you want to compare your settings. You don't need super high quality here. But I think I'm just going to show you the settings in case, in case you want to replicate it. So as you can see, we're getting some directional light obviously from that distant light however you can use skylight if you want a bit something that is a bit more ambient you can tweak the shadows if you wanted to mm, but yeah that way you can just create this static smoke texture that you can use either as an overlay or maybe you want to create like a large smoke bloom in the distance uh, with this technique Right, so I hope you're going to find this helpful and uh, I use this all the time whenever I need a single smoke texture and I find it very useful uh, in my projects. However, maybe next time I'm just going to try to do it in Embergen and see if I can get something slightly better uh, from Embergen. I just want to show you that technique in case you'll find it useful as well. Alright, thanks for watching.